classic going. Gonna get started here with the Brave Fencer Musashi. Um, kind of cover the story and stuff as I go along because there's a lot to it. So, gonna get started in uh, three, two, one, go. So, thankfully, uh, we can skip most of the cutscenes because there's lots of them in this game. Um, <laughs> but this first cutscene that we see, uh, or that we skip, anyways, is our character Musashi being summoned by the princess of the All You Can Eat the uh, All You Can Eat Kingdom, and uh, she is summoning you because the Thirst Quencher Kingdom is trying to like take over, and she needs someone to help. trouble getting my money here. Um, uh, so after she summons you, she's like, yo, we need you to go get this sword called Lumina that a previous iteration of Musashi like used to defeat the evil. Um, so then we start our journey. Uh, here at the beginning, we do a lot of just kind of running. Um, we see our first instance of using a move called Fusion, which basically lets us steal the ability from the enemies. So we use that gunshot to shoot down the logs, um, and then we continue using the gunshot here to destroy some statues as well. Right now we're just working on climbing up to the top of a tower so that we can get Lumina. Kind of destroying the statues off screen so that we don't have to wait for the animation to play out before we can step on the, the switch. Now we're just gonna jump around the tower and avoid some just different things that are just rolling down the tower at us. Uh, you'll see a lot throughout the run, at, um, like whenever I'm going up slopes, I will be jumping because jumping is faster than just walking up them. Uh, it's technically faster than just walking period, but there's a couple of frames of slowdown as you land that makes it so that it's even, so we don't jump on like flat surfaces. And then going down ramps, it's faster to just do, uh, to just run down the ramps, so. And through here, I'm gonna continue uh, just kind of jumping up the tower. I'm gonna be killing some bats, hoping for some good money drops. Ooh, that's a 500, that's a good money drop. <laughs> Means I am basically set for the first part of the run, which is very nice. Um, so we're supposed to puzzle things out that right here we are uh, trying to make the tower go dark. And to do so we come up here and we use gunshot to shoot the bell down. Uh, you don't have to shoot the skeleton there in the back that I shot down, but me and a couple of the other runners thinks it, think it's good luck to do so. so. And then up here, we're going to see our first kind of like difference from how you would probably do it casually. Casually, you're supposed to use fusion to absorb these enemies. They have an ability called stun. Um, so you're supposed to absorb that and use it to stun them onto this switch right here that I'm going to jump over. But if you get them just right, maybe. Oh, he does not want to attack me, so I'm going to accidentally hit the switch. We jump over the switch so that we don't get that text box. Um, but there we go. So if they actually attack you, they will uh, stand on the switch long enough for us to grab Lumina. And then now we have everybody's favorite thing in a speedrun, a auto-scroller. This is actually um, a fun fact 
If you have a ROM of Musashi and it's not dumped correctly from the disc, uh, you actually won't have the music for this section of the game because the section of the game has the... Uh, oh, I can't remember what the, the name of it is, but it, the audio is encoded differently, so you could actually like stick a Musashi disc in a CD player and listen to the audio for this section of the game. Um, so a lot of times those files don't get dumped when people dump the game to make their ROMs. Uh, and here we're going to do some just kind of hanging out on the side because what are hitboxes? Uh, this game doesn't know. So we just kind of avoid most of it. Oh, I jumped too early. Well, now we get to do that part again because I jumped too early. So... Yeah, low budgie, this, this section is really broken. Um, there's a couple of other spots where the collision is real bad like this, but we actually don't see it because I skipped those parts of the game because the collision is bad and makes me sad. There we go. And then here at the end, we can just kind of stand in the middle and run through the rocks. Now we get to meet our uh, our first frenemy, Rutrik. Um, all of the all of the all you can eat kingdom characters are basically named after foods, and then all of the thirst quencher characters are named after beverages. Uh, in the original Japanese, they are actually named after alcoholic beverages, but here in America, we did not get that. So thanks, Duengo. <laughs> So yeah, this is Rutrik. He is kidnapping the princess, who we are trying to save. And then we get our uh, our first boss fight. Uh, basically, the game's broken up into six different chapters. The first five each having like one big boss fight, and then the sixth having a bunch of boss fights because they can. Oh, it trying to do it. So this, this one has uh, three phases. This first phase, we just kind of destroy both legs and then destroy its little green core. Then we throw it out the castle. This one is basically the same. Um, there's a few frames or a few pixels that we can stand right there that we don't get hit by the steam. So we try to stand there. And I'm gonna get hit a bunch. Come on, there we go. And then we're gonna come into his third phase. And his third phase, he's kind of a jerk and just likes to jump around a whole bunch. So we have to let him jump before we can get to his core. And I missed the core, that's cool. <laughs> there we go. So that first section you can only hit for 61 total damage anyways. Uh, and then he kind of throws his ball at us a few times. You can actually jump on top of the robot and destroy the head, but that slows things down, so. Then he should destroy one more building, I believe, and then jump, or he's just gonna jump, okay. Now we can get the final few hits in. And I got super lucky with that, so I got a, uh, a critical hit there instead of having to get a third hit. And that's the first boss. Hey, you forgot something! That's what you get when you try to mess with me! Oh, I almost forgot. I wonder where that idiot is. And we like to joke that, uh, Musashi has narcolepsy because he just sleeps everywhere. We actually don't sleep too terribly much in the speedrun, but when you're playing casually, sometimes you just sleep wherever because why not? There, there is a tired mechanic, and once you get 
over a certain tiredness, you move slower, which is lame. So we try to make sure that we don't get that tired. And here we find out that a character called, that we call the geezer has saved us and moved us to the castle. And we get to meet Scribe Shanky, who uh, is actually super useful in your casual playthrough because he can tell you all about how the games work, or how the game works, and more about the kingdom and stuff like that. And then he also has a book on the game Shoki, uh, which is important later on for one of the puzzles. So now we get to have this cool shot of uh, Musashi sliding down the gondola cable on his swords because gondola is broken. Now we're in Grillin Village. So right here, we're gonna go sleep for a few hours. Um, there was a character up there at the top of the screen before I came into the village who's blocking our path for what we wanna do next, but he's only there during the daytime. Yeah. So we are gonna sleep until nighttime. Then I am going to do a safety save right here because this trick is a pain in the butt. And I only have like, I mean, I have like three or four tries before I would need to use the safety save, but I feel better having it than not having it. So, so here we're going to come down and we're going to get um, an ability called hop that basically lets us kind of jump higher and further. And we are going to... Oh, that's not cool. Uh, we are actually gonna cancel that and go redo it because I did not get into the spot I wanted with that. Well. way that the hopper gets back to the spot. Okay, there we go. Wow, I missed the jump input again. I'm doing real great at this. So uh, we are gonna do what we call it a, a hop cancel. Um, basically, we're gonna do that with a stored jump. Uh, so we can basically force the game to think that we haven't jumped, but still store the momentum as if we had jumped so that we can skip over some stuff. We do that by canceling this ability on the correct frames, so. You'll see the, the like two puffs of dust. We want to see that on the same frame that I canceled. So hopefully I can get this. Nope, I canceled too early. Uh, the nice thing is with this trick is you can tell pretty easily uh, if you canceled too early or too late, because if you cancel too early, you don't see any dust as you land. And then if you cancel too late, uh, Musashi jumps back up. So. Normally during this part, we would be going to meet a character who's currently like in the stockades and helping him find his dog. And then his dog would help us find the key to unlock him. Um, and then he helps us build the raft so that we can get to the chest that I'm trying to get to right now. But that's a lot of stuff and I really don't like the rafting minigame. All 
right, so let's go give this another try. Oh yeah, the, the toys in this game are really great. Unfortunately, we're not going to get any of them because this is any percent, but... Nope, and that was too late, so... <sighs> this is, uh... <laughs> this trick is kind of the bane of, like, everybody's life, honestly. Just because it's so... so few frames. with my sleep cycles, but that's okay. Okay, well. Yeah, the, this trick is indeed one of the tricks where runs go to die, but it's not as bad as a trick that I don't do, so. this time. I was doing really good in practice, which means, of course, I'm gonna mess up now, so. So we've got probably about one more try before I'm going to have to reset if I have to, um, because the macho will come back and be blocking my path again. This is why I have my safety save. the best that I've done that part tonight, so that, that feels good at least. <laughs> um, so the, the reason we kind of try to get as far away from the hopper as we can before we actually fully absorb it is because you only have the hop ability for an hour and a half of in-game time before it just auto cancels anyways and you can't get the hop storage, so... Well, is now a good time for a donation? Sure. We have a $10 donation from Ray Sama, who says, Hey, Eliza, I'm probably asleep at this point, but wanted to wish you good luck on your run. Musashi is one of my favorite games for my childhood, and I wish I could have been awake to see it. Here's to all those skips that I still can't do myself, but one day I hope to. Thanks, Ray Sama. 
You'll get the trick someday, once you're not trying to organize a crazy event. <laughs> this time. Normally it doesn't take me this many tries, so I apologize for that, guys. And you'll, you'll also see as I come into this screen that I'm uh, zooming in on some of the screens you can zoom in like this, which helps because the game can be uh, pretty laggy when it's fully zoomed out, so. This screen is one of the worst. There's a few screens in the last chapter that are really bad, and then there's a climbing screen close to the very end of the game that's just awful. So. jump down to this chest that we're supposed to use a mini game to uh, get to. And that I just got the uh, the first piece of legendary armor called the Elbrace. So I have to go actually get it appraised first before I can use it, but this is going to make it so that I can climb uh, specially donate, uh, denoted walls. Now we're just going to sleep until the, well, we're going to apparently leave the end because I hit the wrong button, uh, and then we're going to sleep. But, so each of the different shops has different hours that they are open based on like in-game time and the day of the week as well. So. Sleep long enough so that the appraisal shop is almost open open at 11 and then we'll just come sleep right outside his door until 11. Okay, we have the Elbrace so we can climb walls. And now we're going to meet the mayor and his wife who are going to tell us that Things are broken at Steamwood, which powers their uh, their village. And we are supposed to go talk to the administrator and find out why it's broken and why he's not fixing it. But first, we're gonna make a pit stop for some items.
So this is uh, one of the points where my route differs from the top three or four runners. Uh, there is a skip here called Steamwood Skip that can be done, but it's like three frame perfect inputs in a row and takes a while to like understand. So I've only gotten a couple of times and don't do it in runs yet. So this is Forrest. He is the Steamwood administrator. He's not doing his job because he didn't actually want to do a job. He just wanted to sit around and drink coffee. So he doesn't know how to do his job. So he gives us the Steamwood manual and we now have 24 hours in game time to uh, stop Steamwood from exploding. I feel like I'm being attacked right now. Are, are you just sitting there drinking coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Describes me to a T. I mean, fair enough. Coffee is delicious, so... So we're just going to climb our way up to Steamwood and play a mini game that most people don't like, which is why most of the runners do Steamwood Skip. Because it's time-based and extra time-based, and if you fail, you restart, and kind of a pain. So we have these uh, little pressure gauges that we learn how to activate on the door by reading the manual. Basically, we have to stop the pressure gauge when it hits the green bar. It starts out nice and slow on the first couple of valves and then gets faster as we go up. And then you also have an amount of time after you complete a valve before you have to complete the next valve. Otherwise, you have to start back over it, valve one. So. If you like timer mini games, this is the mini game for you. Pull my other earphone out so that I can hear the, the game a little better for this part. Yeah, if you, if you hit it in the green, then the gauge on the right goes up. If you hit it outside of the green after that gauge has gone up, then it goes back down. And then, so we have that timer in the top left that is how long we have until uh, we would have to restart at valve one. Just gonna come sleep on the elevator for a second to uh, speed up time a little bit for some later cycles. Um, that's not how I normally do that part. Okay, there we go. I'll do some corner jumps there because it is easier than trying to jump onto the red pipes like the game expects you to. On the second floor, we've got 35 seconds in between uh, each of the valves to finish them. And then we'll have 60 seconds to get up to the, the final valves and then 35 seconds between those valves as well. So, and every time we turn off a valve, more of the steam goes away, which makes it nice and easier to uh, get around places. And I'm falling very behind on chat because this is like one of the few places that like really needs focus. the second to last valve. There we go. 
and run all the way around to the other side for the last bow. There we go. Alright, and now there's going to be a real quick cutscene and I'm actually going to go turn my fan on because it's getting a little warm in here, so I'll be right back. Okay. I am glad to hear that uh, you guys think the game looks fun. I would definitely recommend it. It's a it's a very fun casual game, um, and there we have a very small but slowly growing community of runners. So if you're into like speed running, speed running instead of just watching speed runs, definitely join us. But yeah. So uh, Forrest just told us that. Um, Basically, thanks for doing this, and there was some dude with a cape running towards the peaks. So we are going to go back to the the Twin Peaks where we got the the elk race from, and we're going to go find our friend Rutrik. So right here, we're going to grab um, this character's ability, which is miniaturize or shrink, because if we don't shrink this guy, he's just always here and in the way, but if we shrink him and kill him once, then he's gone for the rest of the game, so. I'm gonna kind of run around here, and we're gonna come uh, unlock our first, uh, kingdom person, I guess. I, <laughs> they're not townspeople because they all work inside of the, the palace, but they're also not like the royal family. So they, they are all locked up in these little pyramids called Bencho Fields. Um, and there's three of them that we have to unlock for a later point in the game. So this is one of those three. It does also give you extra BP, which is what you use to use different abilities. Um, and BP also just kind of goes down throughout the throughout the day as well, so. I think I'm good on money, but I'm gonna grab the extra money right here just to be safe. And then accidentally shrink because I hit circle too many times. We like to call that the shrink of shame. So yeah, so here's her trick. He's trying to get up to uh, the Earth Scroll, and he unwittingly tells us the Earth Scroll is nearby. So we race him up to the top of this mountain. And he's actually not going to fall off, which means we get the slightly faster version of this. So there, there's two versions of winning this. Um, if you like super win, then you uh, end up throwing a boulder off. But if you only slightly win, then he also makes it up here, but you still win. So he just kicks you off. Or I just kick him off, sorry. And that cutscene is slightly faster than going to grab the boulder. So here we have the first scroll, which is the Earth Scroll, um, which gives us the ability to do like a, an earthquake thing, which can move rocks and stuff like that. And then we also have a weird conversation with our sword Lumina. It's the only time in the game we have a conversation with Lumina, so it makes it even more weird. And the voiceovers that you won't hear because I skipped through them is also weird and creepy. Okay. Lumina is basically telling us that 
there's specific enemies that we have to uh, fight in order to unlock the, the full potential of the scrolls called the Crest Guardians, and those are the bosses at the end of the chapter. Uh, we're actually going to skip the first chapter's boss because, or the second chapter, I guess, is boss, because there's less of RNG involved, and you have to save more of the, uh, more of the Bencho types, and that takes a lot of time. So we are actually going to head back to town, and then basically skip our way into the middle of chapter three. So here is our buddy John and his dog Leno, um, who, John is the one that we were supposed to save from the stockades. And he tells us more about the press guardians, but then not a lot, and then he just kind of, he's like, hey, you'll have to like go get permission to go fight this boss. And we're like, well that stinks, but let's go do that. But then we just don't. So. So here we're going to go back to our friend the Hopper and get Hop again so that we can uh, sneak into the church. We're, we're actually supposed to, like I said, we're supposed to go into Hell's Valley and fight a boss called Sculpion. And he's got a lot of RNG to him about like when you can attack him and stuff like that. And I keep falling in the river. So we're going to skip him, then after him, you're supposed to, uh, you find out that one of the children in the village got bitten by these enemies called Bambies. Okay, that was not nice, dude. Can we just go in the river? Thank you. Um, so we're, we're supposed to go get a couple of items that can make it so that we can cure the kid, but that's a lot of time. So instead, we're just going to uh, hop our way into the church. The, the church has a fun little uh, cutscene that, because the game only expects you to be able to get into the church during certain times of the day, um, the game doesn't really know how to deal with it when you get in there outside of those times. So it just kind of skips through the entire scene. On the wall. So here I'm landing on like a single pixel of the corner of the church and jumping inside. Um, you're, you're supposed to come here after like midnight and the, uh, the priest is supposed to help you kind of get up on the roof. And then we would come in here and talk to Bubbles who brings out the Bambi soldiers and you're supposed to basically run around in circles from them for like a fight that the only way the fight ends is by you getting to seven in the morning. But since it's outside of seven, we get to just skip all of that and just read all the dialogue boxes and leave the church. And now the priest uh, is like, oh, thanks. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, yeah, I really love this game's uh, animation and art style. It's uh, this is yeah. fun. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Like it's like I also really uh, love the animation and stuff. So yeah, the the priest gives us the rope, uh, which we'll need later to get into the well. And he also asks us if we find the bell that's supposed to be on the church, uh, if we could bring it back. And we do find the bell, but we don't bring it back because we have a skip to skip over the the item that he would give us. Uh, right here, I'm breaking out of the church. Um, there is, normally when you come in here, you're supposed to already have double jump. So you would just double jump your way out. That positioning does not look right. 
And since we don't have double jump, we have to kind of finagle our way onto the uh, the roof. Go. And then we can just jump out. Yeah, this, this skips us going down into some mines to get a flower, and then it skips us climbing to the top of Twin Peak to get some special water. And then it skips us having to talk to a couple of different townspeople as well. Sorry, I had to do some math real quick and count on my fingers to figure out what time I wanted it to be. So uh, this is the first big dungeon of the game. Uh, and it can kind of be a pain. Normally when you come in here casually, you have kind of a lot more options for healing. But because we skipped a bunch of stuff, one of the characters who would normally give us healing items isn't down here. So, just gonna jump over these first two bottles because there's a dialogue box where the game's like, hey, it's a soda pop. And we're like, that's not a soda pop bottle, but okay, thanks game. And then uh, normally we would come down here with the restaurant owner and he would be like, yeah, I was trying to uh, figure out what's going on with the Vambies. So, eh? and there's this door, but I can't get through it. So we go and we have to go through each of the four sections of the dungeon to uh, unlock the big door. So here we're gonna grab bowl. We all do the bowling room first because it's the only one that you actually need a VP in since you do have to use the bowling ability. And I'm gonna get squished because I didn't jump correctly. So these are more vampies because what's scarier than a vampire zombie, but a vampire zombie on fire. And now we get to uh, do some bowling, except it's not normal bowling because the pins are vampies and they sway, so they kind of just do what they want and getting a strike is a lot harder than it should be. Ooh, that might miss. Ugh. There we go. And then we jump over here because back here is another one of the uh, people from the castle that we need to save. swap back to the, the normal version of Lumina so that we can do like a, a big swing attack instead of the earthquake for this next uh, enemy. And then we have a fun Indiana Jones scene where we just kind of like run away from crushing walls. And then we sleep from crushing walls because bad uh, collision detection. We can sleep right here and gain a little bit of our health back little bowling section that we get to do and then we are home free from this section okay good I thought I had missed that <laughs> and then back here is the third uh person that we need to actually save. He's surrounded by some vampies, but thankfully they just kind of leave us alone once we open the bencho. And 
on that. At the end of each of the four rooms is a little room with a core type thing that we have to destroy. And we try to do it from the third step if possible because it's closer to where we work back to and so it's just less time. So the next room that I do uh, is called platforming and I do it next because it's my least favorite room so I just want to get it out of the way. Uh, most of the other runners tend to do it last because it gives them more time to heal before uh, they come in here so they don't have to use as many items. All right, get your sour please in the chat. Th this dungeon does have some really great music. falling off. And this is another spot where we see the beauty of the uh, collision detection in this game. Sometimes it looks like you are on something and then you're not, and then other times you're like sliding down the side of it. Move out of the way, Bambi, please. Uh, if those guys grab onto you, they do a bunch of damage and you have to break out and they also poison you and poisoning uh, slows you down, so we don't like being poisoned. Boys, some spike walls and a fire bambi. And then in this next room we do uh, we call it Batmanip. Sometimes it helps and sometimes it doesn't. There's some bats that fly around this room and attack you, which it didn't do me any good. Uh, if you do it, like, the timing just right, then you're far enough away when the bats go to attack you that you don't fall. <sighs> Thankfully, this baby just kind of flies around in some of the other rooms, the ones that fly do you land on top of you, so. There we go. Through some little pendulum blades. And then this room, we skip a bunch of the room by just kind of jumping some corners that we shouldn't be able to make. falling off. Okay, come on now. Yeah, so that, that Vampy is one of the ones that lands and destroys you. Why can I not make this jump? Because I'm not supposed to be able to make it. There we go. Go ahead and use another gel real quick. Normally would damage boost through there so that the cycles are correct for this last uh, set of pendulums, but I missed that damage boost, so I have to actually watch the pendulums. Now we're through the second room. I'm apparently out of coffee. So this next room is ghost room. Uh, there's a little ghost enemy that you're supposed to grab the uh, the ability from so that you can kind of like move around without turning off some lights. But the puzzle is the same every time, so we just kind of don't care about that and just do the puzzle. And this is kind of one of the first times that we really use um, a stork jump which basically makes it so that we can jump further than we should be able to by uh, changing our scroll 
the frame after we jump, we uh, reset almost everything within like Musashi's flags, except for that vertical momentum. So we can get the jump right off of the edge instead of further off of the... There we go. Can we use it one more time? And I missed, how did I miss? I thought it was right on the line. Uh, we're gonna come reset this room because it gets pretty laggy when you miss it a couple of times like that. If I miss it again, I'll just go do the puzzles because the puzzles don't take too long, but. I ran back out of the room and back into it because uh, if you get hit by one of the bats once you have the store jump, then you lose it, so. No, okay. We're just gonna go ahead and go do the puzzles. So here you just have to move the red block to the red eye and then there'll be another room with more red eyes that you have to move the blocks to. Yeah, I messed that up. <laughs> this is what happens when you skip puzzles, you forget how to do them. that I was uh, trying to do the skip in. Normally we would skip and land right about here. So here's one of the spots that we all sleep, uh, just to make sure because we're starting to get tired, just make sure that we can continue doing the rest of the dungeon without having to uh, get too tired. And we have to wait for the cycle of the moving platform anyway, so. It's a nice time to do it without losing time. This is the first of those puzzles where the room gets dark once you hit a certain point. If I had absorbed the ghost, I could have used his ability to kind of like move around and see where the platforms were. But since they are the same, uh, every time we just kind of have to memorize the platforms. Oh. This next room has some spikes that we have to dodge. Hopefully we can do a decent job of dodging those. Ghosty room. We're done with this section. Going all the way to the top. to the last room of the dungeon, 
or of this portion of the dungeon anyways. It's uh, the dark maze. Lots of sections of this are just dark and we kind of just have to deal with it. Um, there's some different like enemies that move around with lights that can help, but... up here and we're gonna pick up this Bambi and throw him so that he hits the switch for us. And then so those little blue balls of fire um, hurt you if you get hit by them except for if you land on top of them. That time I did not land on top of it um, but okay and now I can't jump. You can also sometimes heal at the last second before you die so that you don't die. Which I am very good at because I'm very bad at dying. I was trying to uh, hit the bat there that kind of attacked me from the back with my sword. The, the hitbox for the sword goes slightly behind you right as you start the swing. So if you time it correctly, you can actually uh, kill them before you get hit. Oh, trust me, I, I have uh, made many a mistakes in this dungeon specifically. The, this, has, this is probably the section of the game I practice the most. And I'm still, like, I still have a long way to go. Uh, this room is fun because it looks like you should have to move around a whole bunch, but if you do it right, you just have to uh, move forward and jump at the right times. Ooh, okay, good. That bat almost knocked me in when I didn't want him to. And that's the fourth room, so now we can go get our next uh, piece of the legendary armor. We're gonna go finally meet our friend uh, Man Craig, who runs the restaurant, who we should have met before now if we hadn't uh, skipped a bunch of stuff. He would have been standing right here, so Musashi's pretty confused that he's not there. But then we come here and the door opens. Mancrake's excited because there's treasure, which is what he was actually down here for, even though he told us he was here to stop the Bambies. But it's just an ugly belt, as he calls it, so we get to keep it. So now we have the ugly belt, we're gonna go get it appraised so that we have the legendary belt, which makes it so that we can uh, double jump. try and skip the bottles again because the text boxes would still pop up. Come get the belt. Yay, now I can double jump. So now as we leave here, Mancrake's like, I was gonna fix the restaurant, but now the well is empty. Can can you help? You need to go get the rope from the church because I don't have a rope. But we already have the rope, so we get to skip that part. Now we come down into the well.
And here we're gonna see our first uh, instance of the infinite jump where we uh, abuse the fact that scroll changing resets a bunch of Musashi's flags. Uh, one of the flags it resets, if I could get it to jump, there we go, is the flag saying whether or not Musashi has done his double jump. So we can use that to uh, jump way further than we should be able to, to get this uh, old shirt much earlier than we're supposed to. We're not supposed to be able to get the old shirt until after we uh, beat the next boss. And then we're gonna come get our water scroll, which gives us a little like bubble so we can walk on water and then also makes it so that we can fire a little like water bubbles at people. This is pretty epic. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a pretty epic uh, game. And then you can see, uh, not up there, up here. I think we can see the bell from here. Yeah, that's the bell that the priest wanted us to find that we found, but we're not gonna bring back because that takes time. So the, the bell is heavy, you move slowly, and you have to like throw it across things to uh, get it out of the mines. So now we're gonna take our uh, our shirt. We're gonna come visit Connor again and get it appraised. Uh, this makes it so that our like charge up goes faster, which makes the next boss fight a lot easier. And then we're gonna come sleep until midnight so that we can uh, get into the, the restaurant again. The restaurant uh, dungeon is only open between midnight and I think it's 2.30 every 15 minutes. So we're like, it's, it's open for 15 minutes and then it's closed for 15 minutes as the Bambies come in and out. time jumping over the bottles. This time we have double jumps, so it's a lot easier to uh, avoid the bottles. And then down here uh, is where we're supposed to use the item that the priest would give us for bringing the bell back, but we can abuse uh, some damage boosts to uh, get over the, the loading zone there. And here we're going to try a triple jump. Yeah, okay. Sometimes I miss that triple jump, so. And we've got some lava that we have to jump over that I'm probably gonna land in, okay. Bat, bat please. Okay, this is not going the way I want it to <laughs> at all having to use more gels than I really wanted to because I would like to keep one for uh, the next dungeon. But I might just uh, make a pit stop and grab some more items. And then in this room, there's supposed to be a little puzzle where you uh, use the water scroll to blow out the four torches, but we can use that triple jump goodness that we know to uh, jump over the load zone and into the boss room. Yeah, 
out and blow them the double jump abuse. Yeah, it, it's one of my favorite things. Like, it's kind of a pain to learn, but once you learn it, it's so much fun. So for this boss, we're actually fighting a little firebird thing that he shoots out until uh, his core is available, and then we'll hit the core. Not when I wanted to do that. Cool. This is a bad phase one, but that's okay. Because of how long I had had the water scroll equipped, um, it was quicker to just uh, swap scrolls real quick to cancel out of the water scroll than it would have been to wait for it at the end. So, let's see if we can. Yeah. Sometimes if you jump into him, he starts this next phase by running into you instead of running across the room, which then means oh, now he's going all over the place. It means we can more easily get uh, some attacks in on him. bad luck he dropped a flame right on me which got rid of my water scroll so I had to uh, recharge it and he just did it again but I hit him just enough Yeah, he is crying. He's sad because the, the temple is falling on him. and sometimes he doesn't, so... Oh my gosh. He really did not like me this time. Yeah, that is the Relic Keeper fight. And now we have the ability to activate the water crests, which are those big blue circles that I've kind of dodged around a couple of times and that just kind of moves water around so we're gonna go almost immediately to uh, to activate one of those so we can get our next legendary item it is now a good time for a donation sure uh, we have a $75 donation from version who says uh, so the priest can buy a new bell <laughs> Thanks, Version. Thank you so much for that generous donation. So this is kind of the next spot that my route differs a little bit from the top runners. Uh, I come down here and I get these uh, this item called the Legendary Goggles, so that I can appraise items without the uh, without going to the appraiser's shop. The, the top runners skip this because there's a different route that you can take in the next dungeon to not need them. But that is more tricks that I'm still working on learning, so... I take the extra time to come get these 
these nice goggles and then I'll get the, the next legendary items as well. The magician's not here to be a jerk to me. Sometimes there's a magician right there that likes to shriek you as you're trying to hop over those vines, and it's not very fun. So now, in this point, uh, we're skipping a bunch more of the story. You're supposed to do a bunch of stuff and be given some rock salt to use to uh, get rid of a slug. We're just going to jump over the slug. And this is using similar technology to the, uh, the first jump, except I hit circle too early, uh, except I want it to be that, like, too late for that first, uh, trick. That way I jump higher and get over the slug. Also need to uh, keep an eye on the time right here because if it hits uh, too late at night then that area is flooded and I actually can't get back out uh, if it is already flooded so I'm still good right now but definitely got to keep an eye on that okay I missed the, the X input that was special get this jump which is frustrating <laughs> this one this one will put me off kind of even more of my timetable if I am too late because I need the appraisal shop open at certain points in time there we go over here and activate this water crest. That way the water goes away and then we can get the fire scroll. I'm just gonna swap to normal because there's a, uh, a little mini boss fight after we grab the scroll that's much easier with the, the normal Lumina. So now that we have the fire scroll, um, we're gonna see our buddy Kojiro, who is uh, the rival of Musashi. The, both Musashi and Kojiro are based off of uh, actual Japanese samurai. And this particular fight is loosely based off of their rivalry as well, as they had one major uh, encounter at a place called Dragon Island. And this area is uh, also called Dragon Island, so. This is Kojiro, and we're basically like, yo, you, like, he's like, yo, we want to fight, and Musashi's like, I mean, I've gotten a bunch of new skills, like, you just saw them. And he's like, yeah, you're right, oh wait, no, that's not cool. So then we fight, and Kojiro's like, but I have the princess. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'll fight you then, because I want the princess. So he's only got a couple of abilities that we can actually attack him after, and he's not doing them. Uh, so it's this one. And that the fire bird, um, that bird. Everything else, we actually can't hit him. He doesn't have the, the like vulnerability frames for it. So, yeah. and we try to keep him kind of down this direction because we have to run to the princess afterwards.
There we go. Please don't kill me, kill me, Kojiro. So now we've saved the princess, and uh, we use her to help us get back out of here. She basically uh, pushes us out of the slug with her, we like to joke, it's her giant badonka donk that uh, shoves us out. So apologies in advance for the, the screen movement. This section is a little bit of luck for how long it takes to get. There we go. That was actually really quick. Thank you, princess. And now we go back and the geezer's like, yay, you saved the princess, but you're not done yet. And we're like, but can't we be done now? We just want to go home. All right, and so now we have to talk to those three uh, mercenaries that we saved because they've been figuring out where the thieves hideout is. Um, so they have the coded message. It says, it's about the night, don't worry which way you're going. Uh, just always go up. Um, I actually read them in backwards order because mercenary C is closer to the top of the list. Uh, but this is the puzzle where you would need to understand shogi rules to kind of figure it out. Um, it says left, right, right, left, straight ahead. So that's the direction that you move. And then for the last guy, he will tell us which uh, which pieces from the shogi board would be moving. We, we did indeed, Krulon. So yeah, so it's the Meandering Forest, Gold Knight, 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 Bishop. So now we get to go to the Meandering Forest after appraising the goggles. And I'm also going to stop and grab a couple of extra healing items, just because I'm pretty low on health right now. So now I have the L-Goggles, and I can appraise stuff without coming back to him. Which is nice because we're about to get some legendary items that we need uh, in the middle of the dungeon and coming back to get them appraised would not be fun. go to the Meandering Forest, which is uh, this game's version of the Lost Woods, which we technically should have seen earlier because that's where we get the key to uh, unlock the stockades, but since we didn't do that, we haven't seen this area yet. We're gonna use our ability to run on water to uh, skip a bunch of enemies. I could jump onto the bridge. <laughs> and come hop over some vines again. And now we are in the meandering forest. left one for the, the gold shogi piece and then we're gonna go up two and right one for the first night then we go up two again and right again for the second night The 
This one's nice because it starts snowing, so you you always know you're kind of in the right spot to turn right when the snow starts. Here we can cut through some bad collision. We're going to go up twice and left this time for the third night. And cut through some more bad collision. And then we just go straight up the rest of the way for the bishop. Now we are in the Thieves' Hideout, which is the Frozen Palace. Or the Frost Palace. And now we meet Ginger Elle, who we only see a couple of times in the game, and she's like, yeah, the thieves have already left. It's too cold. I'm out of here. So uh, now we're going to get poisoned. Cool. Let me come kill this guy and hope he uh, drops an antidote for me then. Okay, could you s stop hitting me please? Drop an antidote. Which is great because this dungeon is not fun when you're slowed. And they do not want to drop an antidote for me. My goodness. Sword's leveling up. <laughs> okay, I might just have to go through this poison. Uh, kill one more, and if it doesn't drop an antidote, then we're just gonna. Oh, we're gonna do this uh, the fun way. If we get them to spawn, so that we can use them to. Uh, break through the door like we were going to before he hit us. He just kind of pushes us through the, the door collision right here. We're just gonna jump more than we usually do because jumping is faster than walking when you're poisoned. And we're gonna come grab this item because we want some extra money later on and we can sell that item for I think it's like 7,000 gold or something like that. It, it's a decent chunk of money. Oh, I have to actually attack this guy because uh, enemies don't attack you when you're poisoned unless you attack them first. Hello? Can you throw me please? some extra money here. Oh, um, I haven't done this room poisoned before, 
So this room, you have to actually kill all of the enemies without uh, getting hit. And normally, because they are clones, they normally follow what you're doing. But since uh, I'm poisoned, they are not following what I'm doing, which means I'm getting hit instead of being able to counter them. And I only have one gel left. Okay. Why did I get hit? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I have no gels left. <laughs> Which means I have to uh, do a kind of slower strat for the boss of this area. They're not, like, backing up. I might have to uh, do a different strat for these guys. Then, So normally, you counterattack them, and it does a ton of damage and kills them super quick. But they're not backing up after I hit them like they normally would. So they're not, like... So I'm getting hit by them. Nope. Please don't hit me again. this many of y'all right here. Okay, there's one down. Nope, 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 nope. Please don't hit me, please don't hit me. Okay. Okay, there's two down. down. And there's the fourth down. Okay. <sighs> that was pretty manga S there, Furbin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think I've ever actually done this from poison because normally I just sit there in the middle until I get the antidote. So I might be going for the antidote again after this, uh, once I get back to that middle room. We are also going to go ahead and grab an extra bencho up here because it will refill my BP. So once my BP gets down below, I think it's like 25, I start walking slow. So even if I got the, uh, the antidote, I would still be pretty slow because my BP is so low. Grab another 500. make our way out of this room. See if we can get an antidote. Oh, please. Please, friend. being friendly today. Okay. Now that we're just tired and not poisoned, we should be able to deal with it because there's a couple of spots that I can sleep. Just gonna do a quick triple jump across.
fire scroll. That's Fire scroll is a uh, interesting because if you get too close to a wall with it, then it uh, dies faster, which makes sense. It's fire, but. which would have led us into the room down below that we uh, skipped into. Now I'm tired, so we're actually gonna stop in this next room real quick and take a quick nap. should be pretty decent and we're gonna just use the oh, we're gonna fall off the block apparently okay why can't I get my double jump properly just gonna triple jump because the normal way is not working for me <laughs> and then go back to the fire scroll so I have it for later Thanks, Dirk Mathis, for the good luck. So here we're using the blue eye that we got in that one room with a bunch of clones to uh, open a door. Hopefully there's a heart coming up here in a little bit. grab clones so that we can get the uh, the last eye we can grab it from this room or we can actually also grab it from a room on the way but oops. and then this chest has a uh, the red shoes which is our next piece of legendary gear which makes it so that we can actually walk walk up steeper ramps of ice uh, so like those stairs right there we actually wouldn't have been able to get up until we get those shoes guy just so that we don't get attacked by the clone. Dodge the little jumping wolves and grab some more money. Oh, I jumped too early for that clone. That's okay. And now in this room we use that clone ability that we grabbed to kill the, the throwing dude since it works like a bomb basically. careful of the clone since we are uh, pretty low on health. We're gonna grab this guy's ability and come grab some more money again since these respawn uh, every time you leave the room it's pretty helpful for getting enough money for the sleeping we're gonna have to do later. We're gonna come be kind of careful because there's a clone up here somewhere too. Okay, well, he's not where we Every once in a while, he's up there on the very top, and it gets dangerous, so... Head out of here. And grab another heart piece, or another heart right here. And we're gonna head to the boss.
Now this door is the reason that we've been collecting all of those eyes, because we need all three of them to actually get through the door. And since I don't have any healing items, I'm actually going to take this uh, memory box. Memory boxes basically are like a quick save. So if I die to this boss, instead of having to go back to my last save, which is quite a while ago, I just come back to uh, this box and lose some of my money. So preferably I don't do that, but I would much rather be safe than sorry. So here we would normally uh, just melt those down enough that we can jump on top of them and then jump over to the next one since it's a lot quicker. But since I don't have any healing items, I'm going to be melting them down further so I can fully jump over top of them. And this is our next boss, Frost Dragon. He's got two phases. This first phase is pretty quick and easy. He just uh, circles around a bunch, and then we zap him some with the fire scroll. And then we just come uh, take a nap until he opens up the next section of the phase for us. get to uh, climb another bridge. Except this time he's like destroying the bridge behind us as we come, so we have to be at least a little quick. This is where being able to uh, jump on top of them helps a lot because you can skip through this pretty fast. You only have to melt the first one and then you just kind of jump across the top of them. And then this is the second phase where he just kind of uh, does some slams and then he does some icicles. And then his course available. And we just kind of rinse and repeat. He'll do like a a big swing that we can just kind of jump over and hide in the corner from. And I'm just going to, well, if I can get the right angle. There we go. So if he doesn't hit you with enough of those like icicles, then he does a big uh, ice beam attack instead, which is super slow and we like the slam much better. We just kind of uh, defend those icicle attacks. Except for this one, he, uh, he moves a lot quicker, so we'll defend the first or not. There we go. I'm just gonna swap real quick so that that goes away so I can defend. get his last, his last hit in. And that is Frost Dragon. Yeah, the Frost Dragon is definitely a difficult boss fight when you're uh, 
just kind of playing casually. But there's there's that nice corner that you can just hide in and not really get hit in unless you mess up the positioning, so. And then this actually warps us to the front of the Frost Palace. And I am actually going to uh, take a bit of a nap here at the front of the Frost Palace because it is Monday and I need to go to the um, the appraiser shop and he's closed on Monday. So I'm just gonna sleep until midnight because once I leave the Frost Palace, it puts me at um, 1300 of whatever day I'm on. So this way we can skip Monday and not have to uh, deal with it. Normally we try to be out of Frost Palace before uh, it kind of flips over to Monday so that we don't have to deal with the timing here. Oops. I got up a little early. Fencer Garfield. So now we uh, go back to the village. The mayor is sullen and doesn't tell us why. He's just like, yo, talk to the townspeople. Sleeping through Mondays would be pretty good. Uh, if you talk to the townspeople, you find out that the princess heavy air quotes, has been uh, stealing everybody's money, but then it's not actually the princess, it's one of the, uh, the villains, her name is Topo. Uh, we actually miss all of that part because you can skip some of the flags that you would normally hit. Um, so, oops, I want to sell the big straw. We have enough money so that we can go buy some more items. Um, so we buy an S revive because it automatically revives you if you die. Uh, you can only ever have one at a time though. Uh, we buy three cheeses because those help with uh, your BP and we need that later. And then uh, buy a bunch of W gels so that we have some more healing. And then now we're gonna come and we're actually gonna fix the well that we were supposed to uh, fix earlier. But since we didn't fix it earlier, we can skip over some more of the game by fixing it now. We're just gonna use this wonderful ability, uh, D-Kick, to uh, fly through here a little quicker. This is the ability that I stole from that wolf earlier. We'll do a triple jump to get across the water here. Then we activate this uh, water crest. And now there's a fun little cutscene with a couple of the villains, uh, Ed and Ben. And you find out that they're the ones that stole the bell. And they, they were hoping to uh, get a promotion by stealing the bell, so they're pretty mad at you because now they have to go tell their boss that they messed up. And, and here we just do some jumping get places as quick as we can. We come activate this fire crest. Going to unlock the, okay, or we'll get hit by a bat. <laughs> uh, this unlocks the loading zone so that we can get up to the next scroll.
And now that we have a double jump, we can actually climb faster. For whatever reason, the game lets you like do a double jump from a climb position, which uh, is faster than just climbing. And now we have the wind scroll. And this lets us spin in a circle like a cyclone, which we can use to uh, dig holes in specific areas and to uh, blow away wind in, or poison in some other areas as well. here to dig us a hole to get out of this area. Here we run into uh, Bubbles and Ginger Ale who like get super excited because it's Musashi. They've been trying to steal Lumina from us the entire time. But then Bubbles freaks out because we wake up and puts us in a bencho field. So now they can't get Lumina. That's okay, because we have Lumina, so we can just break our way out of the Bencho field. So right here, there's a trick you can actually do with that triple jump to uh, skip over the bramble and actually keep D kick for longer. But that one is actually like, there's only a couple of frames that you can really do it. Um, otherwise you fall too far and hit the, hit the brambles and take damage. So easier to just grab the hopper and skip over them. Run back to the village. Ominous music. So at some point in all of the storyline that we have skipped, we were actually supposed to help fix the gondola. And because the gondola is fixed, there's now somebody manning the gondola. And uh, he had some sweet pea soup in his office. So this ant came to uh, try and break in and get the soup. But the gondola is fixed, so we can go use the gondola to uh, smash the ant. This ant definitely loves soup. I also love soup. Soup is delicious. Yeah, we squish the ant, he runs away, because somehow he's still kind of alive. And he breaks into this area of the mines, which is our next dungeon. The game reminds us that that is just where we saw the cutscene, so that's where we should go next. We climb up here and jump down in. Of course, we swap to the wind scroll, we see that the ant died. And there's some poison, so we just uh, use the wind scroll to blow it away. And 
here we're supposed to use the earth scroll to uh, break the, the wood there and let those boulders across so that we have like a, a bridge, but we can just do a triple jump and make it across. And those guys, when they hit you, they actually do BP for damage instead of health, which is weird and slightly annoying sometimes. Now we get to go into one of my least favorite rooms in the game. We have to uh, use some hoppers to jump over some, some poisoned areas. And if you fall, you get poisoned. And we all know I don't like poison, so. Grab us some money through here. Use this hopper to jump up here and across these spikes. Grab this hopper to jump up here. turn on some of the uh, machinery here in the mines so that we can get to the next little mini game. If I could finish the climb. There we go. Now that all the machinery is on, we get to go back to that first room that we were in. We'll run away from some ants. Is actually one of the rooms that you spend the most time in in a hundred percent because you have to like level up all of your stats and those ants that crawl down the the wall die from one hit from that uh poison that you can grab from the purple ants so they're a really good spot for farming xp scroll and we're back in that room that we uh, climbed up the, the machinery in. Now there's another door that's open down here that we can go through. And right here we actually uh, intentionally get poisoned because while poison makes you move slower, if I could move around that enemy, uh, it also increases your critical strike chance, which is very helpful for this next boss. So now we do the minecart mini game, which has some of the best music in the game. So definitely get your cat jams and your sour pleases ready. In this minigame, there's a bunch of flying ants and rocks and gates that we have to avoid. And just by moving left and right, there's five total positions that we can be in. And we can get hit, I think it's four times before it uh, restarts the minigame. Thankfully, there are a couple of checkpoints in here, so it's not as punishing as it could be for uh, casual play. But. So each time we see those like colored flags, that's a uh, a checkpoint. And 
and this is a section that like every single one of us that's run this game has been like this would be really cool to do blindfolded and then none of us like learn it well enough to do blindfolded so maybe one day one of us will uh, sit down and learn it I literally just ducked during that one part. That's the wrong way. Okay, we're good. That was fun. Definitely one of the better mini games in this, uh, this game. We're gonna go ahead and grab our uh, free box here as well. Dig a hole, and then we are at the next box, the Queen Anne. we uh, take advantage of the fact that when Musashi does his big like circle attack he has some some iframes so that we can actually hit the boss sooner than we're supposed to be able to you're supposed to jump over the claw right there um, and then the queen ant puts her head down so that you can attack but she has or we we have the the iframes so we can just kind of do it early And then right here, I'm sleeping because I want to try and get it as close to uh, Friday as possible. Friday is actually renamed Sky Day, Sky Day in this game. Um, you, you actually can't really start Chapter 6 until you get to Sky Day. So, give me antidotes. And we purposely get grabbed there because in the second and third phases, she grabs multiple times. So it's quicker to just get grabbed and break out than to try and dodge it. Oh, 
Oh, I forgot about that. The, the first attack after, um... After you hit the core is always shorter than the others. And so that's- I forgot about that, so I missed a, a hit. But that's okay. Like this early. Right there at the end, I actually jump off because it respawns me back in the middle, which uh, makes it a little bit quicker to grab the, the core after this animation because instead of having to run all the way from the side, I'm just right there. Wind scroll. So we activate the wind press. head into chapter six. So right here, uh, John, who has been uh, helping us out throughout the game, gives us a calendar that basically tells us that we can't get to the uh, the sky scroll until sky day so now we have calendar taking up an inventory slot and since it is only Wednesday we're gonna go sleep a little bit at the end and grab a save head into the final chapter Save real quick. We're gonna go do the last kind of big trick of the game called Monster Jump. Uh, so basically throughout the game we've been collecting the, the different scrolls and defeating the bosses gives us the ability to activate those crests. Well since we didn't actually defeat the uh, the earth boss we have to do a a big old jump to skip over an earth crest here at the end. So we're supposed to use the earth crest to knock down a boulder so that we can climb a wall. But instead we're gonna come back over to this wall over here. And we're gonna climb up it. And then we're gonna come do an infinite jump into an invisible wall that will push us upwards. And 
And now that we are far enough up, we can continue doing our infinite jump until we can land safely. And use this uh, wind scroll. If you manage to land in the trees where you're not supposed to be able to go, the game doesn't actually know what to do, so it just kind of like resets you to the beginning of the area. And then you have to go do the big jump all over again. Now we have this, uh, this fun giant tower. And every time you fall into the water, uh, you get put right back at the, the start of this area, so... I'm gonna miss that one, so I'm just gonna come around the side and do it. to uh, hit each of those switches twice, which then unlocks the door up to the second level. We swap to the water scroll kind of like in the middle of that hit just so that we already have the water scroll ready and we can walk on the water over here. There we go. And then up here, we're gonna do a triple jump around the corner so that we can get to that first fire scroll spot. final one. I missed it. And then right here we're gonna be real careful not to uh, fall off because those two outer rings, um, now that we've gotten up here, move really awkwardly and it's kind of a pain to get back up here if you fall. Now we have the sky scroll which is the last of our scrolls and gives us the ability to uh, fly for short periods of time. So now we uh, end up in the like Thirst Quencher Castle and the that sky tower just kind of falls to its death. And here we get to right away use the uh, our new sky scroll. And I ran into a wall, okay. So the sky scroll moves you much quicker than uh, or at least when you're going at angles, it moves you much quicker than just walking wood. So it's kind of hard to control. See, I know that there's some healing items throughout this level, for this uh, dungeon. This chapter is kind of basically a big old boss rush. There's short sections of like platforming dungeon and then a boss. So after this uh, room that I'm in now, we'll come up on our first boss of the chapter. This room is uh, pretty easy. If you don't grab the chest, then the cycles, basically you can uh, just jump forward until you get to like right here. Then you can sky scroll to get through all of this and continue basically just jumping forward. And those kind of darker spots right next to me are holes. 
which puts you basically all the way back at the start, which is not fun. And we're going to swap to the normal because uh, we're going to be countering this enemy a bunch, and we are also going to be taking advantage of the, uh, the iframes from the spin attack. attack basically does like three attacks in one, so it's definitely a really great attack to be able to use. Makes this battle a lot quicker. And thankfully, uh, there's also save points throughout this chapter, so we're going to go ahead and take advantage of that and do some safety saves. Resume play, not go back to the save menu. So this is like a little maze where you have to use each of the different scrolls to get through it. And if you go through the wrong door, uh, it puts you back here at the start through like one way or another. Like sometimes you'll fall down from like a higher up door and stuff like that. So. so that we can get through this room. I scroll for this next room so that we can uh, pop across some spikes. And we're also supposed to use this guy's scroll a second time uh, to fly over this section because every time you're on the ground those spikes pop out but if you jump quick enough uh, the spikes never get far enough out to be a problem And here there's kind of a, a swag strat you can do, but if you miss it, you take a lot of damage, so I'm not gonna be trying for it. But if you uh, get over here quick enough, you can stand like right here and jump as it falls and not take any damage, and then just kind of climb up the, uh, the elevator as it goes back up. Saves a couple of seconds, but also is dangerous, so. In this room, we just have to put out a few torches, and we do them, uh, we get that one first, and then we come back for the the other one right there, because the, the door we want to go out of is right underneath it, so. That's not, I don't want the wind scroll. Uh, now we are coming up on every runner's, like, least favorite jump in the game. Um, it's... The casual way of doing it is still extremely difficult, so doing it at the end of a run is just not fun. Uh, if you miss, you start back at the beginning of this area, which is like a two or three minute time loss. Thankfully, I did get it there, so. We do not have to see that section again. Instead, I'm gonna land on some spikes. swap to uh, normal for this next boss fight, Ed. He's got some annoying uh, VO, so apologies in advance for that. He also does thankfully have a little bit of a cheese so that we don't take damage for the most part. 
does this fire beam attack, and if we stand in this bottom corner or the bottom right corner, he uh, just can't hit us for whatever reason. And then he's gonna run away from us and do a couple of bomb abilities. And I was standing in the wrong spot, so I got hit by that second one. So we come down here because the, the first spawn we can kind of control. Uh, that second spawn we can't, though. So we just kind of hope he goes to one of the two bottom spots because those are easier to get enough hits in. I almost moved too early there. only one more cycle, but possibly two more cycles of this. Sweet. And that's it. And now we're coming up to uh, one of the most dangerous points in the game. Uh, casually, it's not anywhere near as scary because you normally have lots of HP um, that you can get throughout the game. And then also, like, the more running around you do, the higher your, uh, your mind level gets, which makes your defense higher. But since we haven't done a lot of running around and we only have 150 HP. Basically everything in here close to one shots you, so healing items are very important. And thankfully, uh, we can steal grenade from the, the green soldier and just kind of one-shot those doors. And we use that throughout the, the rest of this kind of section to get through some doors and stuff quicker. Oh, that was not very nice, soldier. bomb that one because I don't want to take the uh, the chance of getting hit and dying. Grab a heart from over here. Not cool. Don't hit me. Okay, good. I don't think I've ever had that particular knight, like, go up the, the side like that on me, but... I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in here to uh, help with the, the lag, because there's a lot of enemies and special effects going on here. Come on. Okay, that's not cool. So this is, this is one of those areas that's just extremely laggy because there's just so much going on.
here we've got two more of these little walker things that we have to kill. Thankfully they just take grenade to, to kill. And then we can go down the, uh, if I can hit them with a the grenade, they take a grenade to kill. Ooh, that was painful. bit of a skip that we can do sometimes if the, uh, the walker cooperates. He can push you through the wall. Did he? Yeah. So each of those two big doors that I was bombing takes uh, three grenades to hit, which is why we have the cheeses, so that we have enough uh, BP to kill them. But if you get lucky, the walker can move in just the right position so that he can push you through the door. You can do the same with this one, but this walker is a lot more finicky, so definitely not going to get it because he just, like, trapped me. Oops. Hit them so he resets. Oops. I need to use my cheese. Oop, that did not hit. Okay. Now we're good. I was like, why didn't he die yet? grab the BP so that I have it for the next room. That knight is in an unlucky position, so I'm having to come up here. When we come up here, this little like mini boss dude, you just grenade twice and he's dead. Can't throw the cheese. The cheese heals me. And these guys, uh, you can just grenade if you want and try to catch the, the BP that they drop, or uh, you can also kind of just like swing at them with your with your sword to try and kill them. Those guys uh, reset after you hit them, so instead of them being all up in my business, I like to hit them just so that they're kind of out of the way. And from here on out, BP actually doesn't matter, so I'm not going to pick up the BP. Okay, good. I didn't get hit by them. Uh, this room is like a run-ender room, because the, the knight right there just does what he wants. So sometimes you get unlucky, and he just wrecks you as you walk in. And this is my favorite boss, Topo. Uh, because if this game didn't have enough mini games, we are now in a DDR mini game. This is like the one spot that I keep my notes because I would feel silly messing up this late in the game. So she shows you the pattern you have to do and then you have to do it with her. I was talking and not listening. I almost missed it. Turn that up just a bit so I can hear the start of it again. It is indeed, Simon says. Ah! 
And now we've defeated Topo. And Topo tells you that you were basically led here. The Sky Crust is here anyways. Uh, the Sky Crust Guardian. And because we did all of the work, they can then just kind of steal the sword from us and be happy. So. Uh, and then we get to be sad because we find out that uh, Topo actually like DDR too hard and broke her legs. And Topo is one of the best. Uh, yeah, the circle mashing is to skip the, the text. Yes, I would like to save. This is the last safety save. As after we defeat this next boss, uh, it just gives us checkpoints, so... Hey, that's... Princess! And now we're into a section of unskippable text. Away from you, Musashi, that's where. I also have never seen somebody break their legs from dancing too hard until this game, so. And this is Tower of Death. Uh, we like to call it Tower of RNG because there are 20 eyes and in the first and third phases any of the 20 eyes can be the one that opens that you have to hit and you just have to find the one that it is. Okay, so on this phase, it can only be the these kind of two middle-ish ones. So thankfully, there's a little bit less searching we have to do here. Eye is only open for a set amount of time before it closes and you have to find another one. Um, so it can kind of sometimes take a while if you're having trouble finding them. And now we go back to phase one for an eye. Phase one again. 
So this phase, the eyes shoot out a thing that uh, does a lot of damage and also swaps your controls around. But if you hide up here in the corner, you don't get hit. Uh, you're supposed to look for the eye that stays closed to dodge that, but it's much easier to uh, do it that way. Oh, come on. We just need to get one more hit in so hopefully this next phase one goes better than the last one did and since the side is closed I'm just gonna come down here since the the walls coming out do hurt um, it's safer to just avoid them come on there we go Alright, and now we're coming into the, the final stretch. There's some more uh, expose where we find out all of the spoilers ever. And yeah, th this game this game's pretty great with like the insults. Um, at the very beginning in the opening cutscene, you actually get called a little turd. So, you know, that boss might have been the inspiration for Flappy Bird. Yeah, so right here we uh, find out that uh, Flatsky is trying to unlock Dark Lumina and take over the world. And John is actually Capricola, who is the uh, prince of the Thirst Quencher Empire that Flatsky thought was dead. And then Rutrik shows back up out of nowhere because he hasn't been anywhere in the game since we beat him in that race. Yeah, basically. The, the protagonist's retort to Little Turd is indeed looser. Now Flasky's like, yeah, I'm done with the princess. Give me the freaking sword. So we give him the sword because we want the princess safe. And he uses it, and boom, now we have Dark Lumina, because Musashi had actually, uh, in a previous life, hidden, like, not hidden, uh, locked up Dark Lumina inside of Lumina. And by defeating all of the Crest Guardians and unlocking all of the Crests, we have unleashed Dark Lumina, who's a giant scary wizard dude who chases us around. But first, he has to squish people. Exactly. We have to know he's serious. And then we follow the princess out on this giant bridge that seems like the safest place to run away from somebody giant. And whenever we touch down on one of these platforms, it starts falling. So you have to jump fairly quickly. I don't know that Lumina 
is originally Dark Lumina, but possibly. They never really explain that, so. And now Kojiro's kidnapped the princess again because Kojiro. But also Dark Lumina. Princess, watch out! What? And as if a big, uh, big scary wizard wasn't scary enough, Dark Lumina absorbs Kojiro and becomes Cell because giant lizard man. The, the princess did indeed get yeeted. The princess is not very lucky in this game, to say the least. And now we have uh, Dark Lumina 2, who once again chases us into the, uh, the laggiest screen in the entire game. We get to come uh, jump around this tower. Every once in a while, Lumina is gonna attack the tower and then fall off and cause tons of lag because particle effects. And then we get up to the top of the tower and we're like, yo, princess, stay safe while we go defeat the giant lizard wizard. Because thank you, Whimsy Heath, for that. <laughs> it does rhyme, it's glorious. Now we have the Dark Lumina 2 fight, which is a pain when you're playing casually, but once you kind of know his like sequence, it's actually really easy. Uh, we're going to be attacking that gym on his face multiple times until it turns red, and then letting him do an attack, and then attacking it again. So normally he has a couple of attacks that he will do uh, in between you hitting him. One is a grab attack where he like throws you, which we're gonna see because I missed the hit. <laughs> uh, he throws you, sometimes you fall off the edge, so you get the initial damage, and then you also get, you fell off the edge damage. Okay, I'm gonna get grabbed twice. That's not great. <laughs> and this time I probably will fall off the edge because I'm closer to the edge. Oh, nope, I got it, okay. Uh, and then he can also do an attack where he just spins around with his tail. But that attack is much less uh, often. And then for this fireball attack, we can actually just stand right up under him and he can't hit us with the fireballs. And then for this attack, we use Sky Scroll to just avoid big stuff. You can also just jump over those, but takes a little bit better timing to do so. And that's Dark Lumina 2. And then it wouldn't be a Square Enix game from the 90s if there wasn't at least another phase to boss. So now we go from uh, Cell to Frieza.
and uh, this boss is actually really hard if you don't understand the mechanics of it. You're supposed to use fusion to attack him, but like nothing in the game really tells you that. So we're gonna let him get his first attack off so that we can get into a better position. So we're gonna come back here and see if we can get multiple attacks in on him uh, in a row. So now that he's white, we can use fusion on him and turn him into the eyeball and then we can slash him. And now he does like a, a pull in ability. So we run away from that. And then if we time it right, nice. We can get an extra hit in uh, before he can do his next ability. And then if we time it right a second time, we can get a third one in. Uh, nope, I did not quite get that one, but that's okay. And now we just want to kind of move towards the center so that, oh, okay, we can get hit by that. That was painful. Uh, the boss tends to move towards the center after every attack, so we try to stay between the the boss and the center so that we can make sure we're aimed correctly because if you're aimed wrong then fusion goes off to the side and you miss we're gonna see his clone attack here in just a minute because i don't have enough space to get a trickle in we're just going to kind of run away from him. And let him do his clone attack. This one, it's really hard to dodge the first one, but once you've dodged and or been hit by the first one, it's really easy to dodge the rest because it goes in the same circle every time. And that is time. Sorry, I forgot that I was not at the, the hands of the timer there. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's Dark Lumina part three. And then there's just a bunch of uh, cutscenes and stuff after that. The This initial cutscene's actually a lot of fun before it goes into the, the credits, so. Thanks for uh, hanging out, guys. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed the run. Uh, if you are interested, in running the game, we do have a Discord um, that you can find through the SRC. Um, but also there's there's three or four of us that run it pretty consistently. And we've got a few new people right now as well. So if you just like watching it, uh, definitely follow the the Brave Fencer Musashi setting or group on Twitch so that you can check us out when we're live. <laughs>